Hello there. Um, welcome you to this live broadcast and uh, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hope you are doing well and the Lord is mercifully keeping you fine. Welcome to the new week. Today is uh, Sunday, the first day of the week. And I want to believe that you have surrendered yourself and your plans to the Lord for this week and asked him to watch over you and make you productive. Today I want us to share about the name to call. Um, God in the Bible is known by different names which refer to his attributes. It's a God of mercy, a God of love, God of providence, God of protection. And in the New Testament, God came through his son Jesus Christ, incarnate of the Virgin Mary. When you remember the story of his conception, the angel spoke clearly to Mary and told her she will bear a child and she will call him Jesus, which name is Yeshua, which means salvation. And the angel told her clearly that he shall save his people from their sins. And so we say, Emmanuel, God with us, meaning God is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent, is the ever present help in times of trouble according to Psalms chapter 46, verse 2. Our God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in times of trouble. So let's talk about the name to call. Many times we find ourselves hard-pressed, and sometimes we don't even know what to do. Sometimes we remember friends, we remember connections, and we're very good at rushing to call people whom we believe can help us. But you know, sometimes they can help. Sometimes they even fail because behind them, there's a power that makes things possible. There's the invisible hand. Nothing happens without God knowing, without God permitting. So when you see a breakthrough, yeah, behind the scenes, God has been at work. And so today, encouraged by the words of Psalm chapter 50, verse 15, where he says, call unto me times of trouble, and I'll deliver you, and you shall glorify me. God encourages us that when we find ourselves hard-pressed, when we find ourselves in the valley of the shadow of death, we must call upon him. We must have the name to call, and that is the name of the Lord. He's a strong tower. The righteous run to it, and they are safe. I don't know what you're going through right now, but I want to remind you that there's a name to call. Jesus' name is power. Jesus' name is victory. It can move every mountain. It can set free every captive. And when Jesus came in, he laid this man face so very clearly and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has appointed me to not only preach the good news to the captives, but to bring deliverance to the oppressed, to open the eyes of the blind, and to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is our ever-present help in times of trouble. Call on Jesus, because he shall not fail you. When I was growing up, there's a song we used to sing. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Call Jesus, he will be your friend. Try Jesus, he will set you free. He'll rescue like he did it to me. He'll save your soul and set you free. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Try Jesus. He will be your friend. Try Jesus. He will set you free. He rescue like he did it to me. He save your soul and set you free. Oh, the friends we have in Jesus. 
Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. I sing this song because I'm a life testimony to the faithfulness of the Lord. The name Jesus has been a name that has saved me many times. I remember one day I was traveling back from Kapara to Soroti, and on the way, my driver, and I was carrying many people in the main bus, but from nowhere, he jumped out of the lane. And as he jumped out of the lane, the vehicles that were behind us came in and closed the lane. We had nowhere to go back in. And there was a fuse of a, a tipper lorry coming ahead of us. We we're headed in for a collision. He can't go back to the lane. The tipper is coming and we're just going to crush us. I just shouted the name Jesus. The driver very fast thought and swept the car to the extreme right. By the time we were trying to escape, the tipper had reached. It hit us in the corner of the car. We went flying up and went and overturned and fell into a ditch. The car was upside down. It was a place that was muddy. I was upside down and drinking dirty water, but I was alive. I only have very few scratches in my body. We had about eight people in that car, nobody died. People were shouting and crying, the car was written off. But none of us died in that accident. The name to call, the name Jesus, saved us. It says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't just mean spiritual salvation, but your sins will be forgiven and you'll be assured of a place in heaven. But it means even when we are exposed to physical danger, the Lord is always there to save us and to protect us. And that is the name, that is the Lord who safeguarded the children of Israel when they left Egypt. Even when the Egyptians were pursuing them, Moses cried out to the Lord. God parted the Red Sea and they were able to move on dry ground. And the enemies came and they couldn't. They couldn't benefit because it was only the chosen children of God who had the privilege to enjoy God's protection. Egyptians were swept and they were all killed. And even before that incident, what did God do? When Egyptians were closing down on the children of Israel, the Bible says God bogged them down. There was a fire. God separated the children of Israel from the Egyptians. Let God separate your enemies from you. I don't know who is pursuing your life. I don't know who is after you. It could be through witchcraft, through so, so, so sorry, maybe physical harm. Someone wants to kill you. But God is faithful. He vindicates those who are his own. I have survived death several times through poisoning physically and all that. And just because God has been faithful to me, you may be out there and your life is endangered. The name to call, the name Jesus. Make Jesus your friend. Cry out to him. When nobody is there to help, let him be there. Sometimes we come to him as a last resort, but still he helps us. He comes in and helps us. Today, I don't know, maybe it's your debt that someone has failed to pay. Maybe somebody is denying you a job. Maybe somebody is molesting, is taking advantage of you. Maybe there's someone who is blackmailing you and you're a victim. You have cried out for all. I want you to look to Jesus. Go and tell him that, Lord, I have no one else to cry to. I don't have any other salvation. I don't have a father. I don't have a father. I don't have a friend. I don't have a connection. I don't have a technical know-who. In this world, even for you to get a job, even for you to do anything, you must have a godfather. Go to God and say, God, you are my godfather. You are my husband if you're a widow. You are my father and you're my mother if you're an orphan. And call on the name Jesus. Jesus will always be there for you. He will rescue you like he did it to me. He saved me from an accident. He has saved me from poisoning. He has saved me from so many threats to my life. Not because I am better than anybody else, but because God is faithful. And since he called us his faithful, he can also do it. If he did it for me, if he has done it for many other people, he can do it for you. He did it for the disciples. Remember when the storm came and they were in that boat and didn't know what to do. Peter just called to Jesus and said, Lord, don't you care? We are perishing. 
And the Bible says Jesus woke up from where he was sleeping and rebuked the storm and said, peace be still. And there was a great calm and they were saved. Jesus is in the business of rescuing people. He's in the business of saving people. But he says, call unto me in times of trouble and I'll deliver you and you shall glorify me. The Lord takes glory in rescuing his people. He takes glory in intervening in the affairs of men. And so sometimes he allows problems to come so that we call unto him. And when we call unto him, he intervenes. And when he intervenes and we see his hand intervening, what do we do? We fall down and bow down in worship. We raise our hands and say, Hosanna. We give him all the glory. And that's what God wants. God wants to take glory because when he intervenes, you surely should thank him. And that's why the Bible tells and encourages us to be grateful, to always show gratitude. When God does something, however small, you know, in all things, I think that's what Paul says in Thessalonians, in all things, give thanks because this is the will of God in Christ concerning us. So what are you going through? Have you given up? Are you lamenting? Have you tried Jesus? Is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is the answer to the world today. It's always a name to call. Emmanuel, when we want to keep feel his presence around us. Jehovah Jireh, when we want his providence. Jehovah Rapha, when we feel we are sick and we need his healing. El Shaddai, the ever sufficient one. Jehovah Nishi, our banner of victory. When your enemies come against you and you don't know where to break through, God is the God of the breakthrough who fights for us like a wild ox. We can always call upon him. And because he's the God of the whole world, there is nothing he cannot do. So my sister, my brother, I don't want you just to give up and cry. If you're crying, cry in prayer. And let your prayer cry be a cry of surrender. Where you say, God, I can't fight this battle alone. I need you. Remember a story of Second Chronicles chapter 20, when three nations came against the King Jehoshaphat. He was helpless. But what did he do? He just went to the temple and cried to the Lord and said, God, you have been there for us. You fought for us before. But here I am, faced by all these nations. They want to crush me and my people. And then he said, God, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are upon you. That was a prayer of surrender. He said, God, I am weak. We can't fight. They have the forces. They have the strength. And sometimes people come against us with money, and you don't have the money. They come against us with connection. They are more powerful, and you look like a grasshopper. But you see, when you look like a, gross, a grasshopper with God, it's bigger than the majority. And so sometimes what's important is what you realize that if people are many and are coming against you, you just align with God. You alone with God, you are more powerful. So Jehoshaphat knew that secret. So he went to God and said, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are upon you. And the Bible says immediately he surrendered, he prayed that prayer of surrender. A prophecy came and God said, do not worry, do not be afraid. You don't need to fight in this battle. Just take possession and you'll see the salvation of the Lord. And encourage him and believe the God's prophets and you shall be established. And the Bible tells us that as they started to sing, God said to those armies against each other. They two turned against the other one and crushed and killed everybody. After killing that one, the remaining two turned against each other and they fought until the last person died. And then the children of Israel just went to take loot. They never wasted any energy. God took over the battle and God fought for them and gave them great victory. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. As he fought for Jehoshaphat, he can fight for you. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know who your giants are, but God, don't look at your limitations, but look at God's limitless limitations. Put God above those giants and God will manifest in glory and in power. The Bible says a contrite and broken heart, God shall not despise. And it says so in Second Chronicles, I think 19.6, that the eyes of the Lord ran to and fro throughout the whole world to prove himself strong on behalf of those who thus are loyal to him. Just surrender your heart to him. Trust the Lord and he will establish you. Trust the Lord and he will fight for you. The name to call Jesus is salvation, is Yeshua, is God with us. So no matter what you're going through, 
Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. There is that song. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. I encourage you to call upon the name of the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord alone, who sits upon the throne, who reigns forever and ever. When Jesus was going, he said, All power and authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. If Jesus has all the power, the devil has none. But you can choose to give the devil as much power as he can take based on your mindset. If you feel God is weak, then you'll give the devil some of the power. But salvation belongs to our God. All power and authority belongs to Jesus. Align with Jesus, surrender your battles to him, and he will take over and he will establish you. Be encouraged with these words. And please don't quit because your God is there as a man of war, ready to take over your battle, ready to push you to the finish line. Because once you call upon him in your time of trouble, he will deliver you. And when he delivers you, you shall glorify him. And please, when God delivers you, when you receive your miracle, glorify him. Testify. Tell the whole world that God is good and his faithfulness endures forever. Thank you for listening to me. May the Lord bless you and let this word have room in your heart. In Jesus' name. My name is Reverend Samuel Ediel, encouraging you that you may stand strong and move on forward ever, backward never. May the Lord bless you. Amen. And amen.